Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for EllenHudson.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing a beginner's guide to stamping. We're going to talk about the essentials and a few extras along the way. I'm going to talk you through some of the things you may need to get started, why you might need them, and then show you some projects that feature just some simple stamped techniques. So here's a look at kind of what I would whittle down the basics of stamping to. You need some stamps, you need some inks, and you need something to stamp those stamps with, like a block or a misty stamping tool. <laughs> now I've pulled out some of my favorites to show you here today. These are all available at ellenhudson.com. And I hope to give you kind of a different take on some of these products and how to think of them. So let's start out with stamps, because if we're going to stamp, we need some stamps, right? And I've kind of categorized these stamps into a few different categories here and am kind of walking you through what to consider when you choose these stamps. So let's start out with some element stamps. Now, these are stamps that won't necessarily be the focal point, but they're nice to kind of layer with other stamps to create backdrops or add color or add a little interest to your stamped panel. And I will show you those in action today. Next up are sentiment stamps. Now these stamp sets here are purely sentiment stamps. This is a one piece sentiment stamp. There is a coordinating die available with that, but that's kind of an extra. This is one of my favorite sentiment stamps along with this one here from the Essentials by Ellen line. They have a great mix of different sentiments for different occasions and that may be something you want to consider when you're picking up your first sentiment stamps. Now these stamp sets here combine images or elements along with sentiments. So they tend to be kind of theme based. This one cake has a lot of birthday type images as well as some coordinating sentiments. So that's kind of a great thing to pick up because you have everything you need for an occasion there. Now florals are a great starter type stamp set as well because they can be used for so many different occasions, but there are different types of florals. This is a solid floral stamp set. So in order to use these effectively, you're gonna want colors of inks. Whereas this one is more of an outline floral image. So this one works great layered on top of some of those elements that we talked about earlier, or you can use your favorite colored pencils or markers to kind of color that in. But you'll wanna probably stamp this in a darker, bolder ink, like a black ink, and then kind of carry on with your techniques from there. So I really wanted to point out the difference in the florals so that you can consider what types of ink you may already have and what may work best for those. If you're looking for something that you can just stamp and go, this solid image set is a great option. If you wanna take a little more time and color or layer this on top of something else, then this outline is a great option for you as well. So consider the techniques that you think you might be interested in. Now let's talk about ink. Let's be real, there are so many inks on the market. <laughs> and I'm gonna talk to you about a few that you just need to get started. The first one is a good black ink. And this Gina K Obsidian Amalgam ink wins my vote for my favorite black ink because I can use it for stamping sentiments. It's a nice, dark, rich black ink, but I can also use it to watercolor or to use with colored pencils or Copic markers if that's a technique that you venture into down the road. A Versamark ink is usually used for embossing, and I'm including that in the extras today, but this is also a great ink pad to have to create a watermark effect. It is a foam ink pad, and it is a clear watermark ink. It stays sticky a little longer, so like I said, a lot of people use it for embossing, but you could use it on its own as well on some colored cardstock to create some really cool watermark effects. So let's get into colored inks. And really this is going to end up being a preference thing to you. But if you're getting started in the world of stamping, it can be a little overwhelming. These are a couple of my favorite brands here, Concord and Ninth, as well as Catherine Pooler. And you can go one of two directions. You can get a set of these mini ink cubes from Concord and Ninth, or you can get the larger ink pads. Now, it may be wise to get a set of cubes and kind of try it out. You get a variety of colors and you have a lot of options. But if you know that there's a color that you will like and use a lot, then you can pick it up in a larger ink pad. 
Now, both of these brands of ink pads are a foam-based pad. They're a little different than the old school felt pads, so they do take a little bit lighter touch, but I think getting a variety of colors in your stash will kind of open up the possibilities of how you can use your different stamps. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be using these little cubes here to demonstrate all of my stamping, and I'm gonna stay within this set. That's gonna give you a good idea for the different things that you can create. Now, photopolymer stamps come off of the backer and you need something to stamp them with. And you can go one of two directions. You can go with a clear acrylic block like this one here. The photopolymer will just cling to it and so you can use this as your quote unquote handle so that you can ink up your stamp and press it onto your project. Now your other option is something like a misty stamping tool and I really feel like this is the way to go because it opens you up to so many different techniques and I'm gonna show you that here. But if you're wanting to go more budget friendly, the acrylic block is definitely gonna be your friend. So I'm inking up the sentiment stamp in my favorite Gina K Obsidian Black Amalgam ink and I'm purposely kind of flubbing it up just a little bit. I didn't get the greatest, most solid image here. And this is where a misty stamping tool can really come in handy, especially for beginners, as you learn the touch and the kind of pressure that you need for stamping. So this acts as an acrylic block as well, but that hinging door will allow you to do so many different techniques. It allows you to create multiples and it allows you to stamp in the same place more than once. So I've inked up my stamp and stamped it once. It looks okay, but guess what happens if I leave my paper mounted in that lower right hand corner, I ink it up again, and then I stamp in the exact same place. My black ink just became darker and richer and bolder. And keep in mind, you can do this with colored inks as well. And when you do that, you can actually layer up the ink and create a different tone using the same ink pad. So you stamp it once, it's light. You stamp it twice, it's a little bit darker. You stamp it three times, it's even darker. Now the trimmer is something that's often overlooked in the beginning phases of stamping and card making. And I think that there is no substitute for a good trimmer. This is definitely a basic. I like this aluminum rail trimmer from Fiskars because I can place this down and I can see exactly where my blade is gonna hit because it's gonna hit along the edge of that aluminum rail. And this allows me to create nice straight edges on all of my card fronts and my card bases. This size is good because it's big enough for me to create A2 size and five by seven size card bases. And I get nice, clean, straight cuts every time. So don't overlook or discount the value of a really good paper trimmer. Now, this is not my favorite way to score, but it is an option with this trimmer as well. Because it has a groove for the blade, you can actually line up your cardstock along the measurement where you want to score, and you can kind of nestle your Teflon bone folder in the groove of that cutting well, and you can kind of run it down there to create a nice score line on your card base. And scoring your card base is really going to be one of those things that makes your card look nice and finished and a little cleaner when you finish it off. So if you're not scoring, you may get some cracking in your card base, but by scoring ahead of time, you're gonna get a nice clean fold. So this scoreboard here is actually my preference, but if you had to pick one or the other, a trimmer or a scoreboard, I would say stick with the trimmer first, add the scoreboard later. And I'm just getting some white card bases ready so that we can create some cards using some basic stamping techniques. So these finished card sizes are A2 size cards. They measure four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And now I am taking this sentiment over to my Misty stamping tool. And I'm doing all of my stamping today using these little ink cubes. Now you're gonna see my head come in here because I've kind of sped this up so that we can get through four cards here. I've left my stamp mounted on my Misty Stamping Tool door, and then I've just moved my card base down three grid lines in that Misty Stamping Tool. I've cleaned off my stamp, 
inking it with another color. This is Honeysuckle from Concord and Ninth, and then stamping again. Now I can take this back to its original starting point, move it up three grid lines instead, and clean off my stamp and re-ink it in a third color, which is Grapefruit from Concord and Ninth. And now when I stamp this below that original pink stamping, I have three of these sentiments stacked up. They're nice and straight in a row, and I think that there is nothing like a Misty stamping tool for doing techniques like this. Now this Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois is a great tool to use to clean your photopolymer stamps. And so if you want to consider cleaning them, you can run them under some water, you can use a baby wipe. But that Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois has no lint on it and it cleans the stamps really well. You can re-wet it and wash it and use it over and over again and it's a great thing to have on hand. So I've gone ahead and stamped that scripty birthday sentiment below the three happies there. And now I'm doing a technique called masking. Now I'm using some post-it tape for this and just taping over the edge of those sentiments that I've already stamped. You could use a post-it note instead if you don't have the post-it tape on hand. And that tape is going to protect those sentiments as I stamp this heart kind of overlapping the sentiment. So you'll see part of it's on the post-it tape and part of it's on my card base. Now when I peel up this masking tape or post-it tape, I have a nice clean edge, my heart is stamped on there, and I don't have any overlap. And you can see I've created the exact same card in a different colorway that creates a more masculine look. So those were all created using some basics of stamping, but let's move into a little extra. I've picked my two favorite techniques that kind of takes stamping to the next level. And I've included those in this video as the extras. So something that you might wanna add on later as you continue on with this hobby. They really are techniques that just kind of open the doors a little bit more, allow you to use your stamps in different ways. So I'm starting out by stamping on my card base. I'm using kind of that same technique I used before where I'm stamping using the Misty stamping tool and just moving my card base up and down in the Misty stamping tool so that these are all perfectly aligned. For this background, I am using the Essentials by Ellen Abstract Paint Strokes stamp set. And this is one of my favorites because it has a bunch of different sizes of these paint strokes and you can kind of layer them up to create a background. And then I'm going to take and mount this Mondo Wildflower Outline Floral Stamp Image in my Misty Stamping Tool. And I'm going to stamp it right over the top of that background that I created. So I'm creating kind of a layered stamp effect. And this is a great way to use those outline stamps if you don't like to color. Now I'm taking this Thanks Sentiment. I'm inking it up in the Versamark ink, which is that ink that I prefer to use for heat embossing. I'm sprinkling on a little bit of white embossing powder and in order to do this technique, you're going to need not only the embossing powder, but a heat tool. Now a heat tool is different than a hair dryer, so don't try to use your hair dryer, but this heat tool is gonna get nice and hot. It's going to melt that powder on my project and it's gonna create a really beautiful, bold white sentiment that overlaps and is opaque over those other stamps that I've created. Now I created another background in the exact same way and I'm doing some heat embossing on this background as well. So heat embossing would be my first extra technique that I would recommend adding on. And I am also going to recommend adding on die cutting. And I'm gonna show you that in action here. I have this cake stamp set from The Essentials by Ellen Line. And I am stamping this cake using the Gina K Obsidian Black Amalgam Ink onto some white cardstock. And I am going to use a die to die cut this out. So I have the coordinating die. And if you've never, if you're not familiar with dies, you can kind of think of them as cookie cutters. So they're going to exactly cut out the image that they coordinate with. So you can see I used my quote unquote cookie cutter or my die to place over the top of that cardstock. I ran it through my die cut machine and I have a perfectly die cut image. So there you have it. 
four brand new cards featuring some basic stamping techniques as well as some extras. We have the essentials and the extras and a little bit of a guide of where to start if you're just getting into stamping. I know that it can be so overwhelming because there's so many options out there. But I hope this gave you a little starting point and a little something to think about as you get into this fabulous hobby. There are so many resources out there, so be sure to stay tuned to this YouTube channel for lots of video tutorials showing you how to do different techniques in this fabulous hobby. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the fabulous education shared here. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.